Good morning, traders. Welcome to today's market review. This is Fred Razak at CM Trading. Today is April 4th, 2018, and today is Wednesday morning. So looking at the economic events of the day, starting out early this morning, 1030 South African time construction, PMI number coming out of the United Kingdom. And then that's followed by, by a bunch of U.S. numbers starting at 2.15 South Africa time, ADP non-farm employment change. Now, this is the prelude to Friday's non-farm payroll. A very important number coming out, so we've got to take a look at that as the markets have really been rotating a lot. And we'll take a look at the Dow Jones in just a moment. Then at 4 o'clock South African time, ISM non-manufacturing PMI number coming out. And then lastly at 4.30, weekly oil inventories numbers coming out. Now, altogether, these numbers are generally important but not as important. And I think just because we're at certain thresholds on the technicals, these numbers will be much more significant as these uh, events follow through today and through Friday with the non-farm payroll. But let's take a look at the markets to see what we're talking. So we're jumping here into the Euro USD, and as you can see, we're trading at 122.72 ish level, which is the bottom of the range between 123, 124 ish. We've been trading, as you can see here, on a four hour chart since somewhat of mid February between a range. Okay, we haven't been breaking up higher, we haven't been breaking lower, and it's you know, very choppy kind of market. So you just got have to, you know, acclimate yourself to this type of environment. Now, the fact is, is that we're in an even tighter range than we were between 125 and 122. We're at about 122-ish level and 124-ish level, you know, on the extremities. So that's about a 200 pip range. So you just have to, you know, adjust some of your, um, what you expect to get out of the trade maybe instead of getting you know anywhere between 100 to 200 pips on the trade you're looking to get anywhere between 30 to 70 to 80 pips on a trade okay and just you know being a little bit more particular about your entry and your exit stops so you know we're trading here at the bottom of this range right now it might be a good time to actually pick it up as we go into the number you know and to build that position but just be you know be selective and, you know, book your profits quickly so that, you know, if it does, you know, pull out at the top of the range, okay, you've gotten yourself out and you've booked yourself your profits. So right now we're trading again at the bottom of this range of 122.72. So we're looking for it to bounce back to the 123.30 ish level, you know, which is a 60 pip range. Okay. So that's, you know, you have to, again, acclimate yourself to a realistic approach as to you know the new trading environment that we're in gbp usd holding this 140 line okay not bouncing below it not selling excuse me below it and we're trading now 140 70 ish level and let's see if we can extend this rally above this 140 93 ish level as well okay so you know although we've you know not have not have not not has been as choppy as we have been at the euro usd we're looking for a little bit of you know, a little bit more of a bounce here because it is the GBP and it has gotten stronger versus the dollar. Now, jumping to oil, we've had a massive sell-off the other day, $65 to $63 a barrel, okay? Now, again, we've had a little bit of an unrest in the market, you know, some of the, you know, words between China and the United States about how they're going to float the price of uh, the price of a barrel, uh, whether it's going to stay in the denomination of a dollar, whether, you know, China is going to come in and it's going to, you know, use their currency to denominate the, the price of a barrel. That's a very important factor. OK, and that's obviously going to affect the price of the dollar versus the barrel of oil versus any other currency that's trading against the barrel of oil. So, you know, as we stand right now, you know, the price of a barrel of oil is quoted in dollars. OK, now that has been the case since World War II. And, you know, this denomination causes now most of the countries in the world to change their currency into dollars in order to buy oil. Now, if that changes, that will certainly weaken the dollar. And that's a little bit what's been going on in the last five years with Russia versus the United States and Ukraine. And, you know, all this story that's been in the backdrop of it, you just get a little bit of the, you know, a little bit of the drops of information that's, you know, fed into the news. But that's really what's drawing this market. OK, so it's going to be a, again, it's going to be a choppy market. And we're going to look at the inventories later today to see how actually that pays out. Now, looking at the USD CAD, which is a, you know, which is a currency that is driven by the price of oil, it's getting stronger versus the dollar. Now, just now we're, we're we 
sold off from 129.34 ish level to 127.97 ish level we could still continue going down to 127 technically speaking okay so if we do get a pound you might want to look to short it to actually you know anticipate that it might you know close in on this 127 ish level so looking into later today now the dow jones now this has been the story of you know the past month and a half i would say since the beginning of february or the first week of february it's been a very choppy market Markets have been selling off from 26,600 ish level. We sold off to a low of 23,350 ish level. We bounced up and then we continued selling off. And now we're testing that low again. So, you know, with the numbers coming out on Friday, some of the, you know, corporations, Apple, uh, Microsoft, um, and some of the other bellwethers in the market have been a little bit more cautious moving forward. So that has, you know, that has, um, affected the market and essentially for this sell-off that we've had just you know since monday okay so we sold off you know close to six to seven hundred points on monday and now we we bounced back the day afterwards okay so you know there's a little bit of pull and chug between the bears and the bulls in the market and we just have to keep a really sharp eye you know for any catalyst any type of news that's going to come out especially with non-farm peril people are going to be a little bit more you know, perceptive about it and a little bit more cautious about it as we enter the week. So looking at a four hour chart now, if we bounce to a daily chart, you can see that we've made this double bottom here at 23,500 ish level. So, you know, the question is, is that as long as we maintain this line, we can conceivably bounce off to the high side. However, if we do break it, then we could see ourselves coming back to the 22, 21,000 level for sure. Okay. Now, you know, looking at this, Altogether, we're still on a downwards momentum. Okay, although that we're consolidating here, and it looks like we're consolidating here. That's what I would be looking here. Now, looking at the JSC, this is a really important factor. Is that we're on previous resistance, you know, subsequent support. So 48,411. Today's a really pivotal day for this. Okay, if we do not, you know, carry this up somehow, we could see this further breakdown and go into the 4746. Uh, 46,000 uh, on the JSC. Now that's an, a very important element, you know, and that could be a really a fantastic opportunity on the dial side to, you know, to short sell the market. Okay, as the market continues trading later today. So that's what I would be looking here. Some sort of either breakout move on the downside, or either we'll hold the line here and then bounce above it. Okay, so that's really an important trade for today. Now looking at the DAX as well, you know, trading within a range. You know, and we have to look for the DAX to see if it's going to give us any sort of indication as to where the Dow is going to go further today. Um, we've had a nice rally, but we keep on gapping down. So, you know, these rallies need to be sustained. Okay, they need to hold their line. They need to continue breaking out higher if they're looking like they're going to solidify. So a couple of, you know, events later today and events further in the weeks so that should make things a little bit more interesting as the trades continue to you know, develop throughout the week. This is Fred Razak. I want to wish you guys a great trading day. Thank you.